Mommy, wake up quickly. I woke up to my daughter's voice. Still half asleep, I looked at my phone on the bedside table and saw that it was 2 a.m. in the middle of the night. What's wrong at this hour? Did you need to go to the bathroom? In response to my question, my daughter tearfully said, Please, we have to escape from Dad. Huh? Those shocking words completely woke me up. I glanced at the empty spot next to me and realized my husband wasn't there. What do you mean? Why do we need to escape from Dad? Just hurry! We have to escape from here! My daughter's face was dead serious. In her extraordinary state, I decided to trust her and immediately got up. I hurriedly packed our things, took my daughter's hand, and left the inn. Please stay tuned to witness the surprising truth and its conclusion. My name is Susan Kelly. I'm 37 years old. I'm a working mother raising children. I work for a major publishing company as an editor. I've been working hard as an editor since I was a fresh graduate. My husband's name is Stephen Irvin. We met through a matchmaking agency. With my busy job and unsuccessful relationships, I was looking for a man who understood my work. Stephen is a freelance systems engineer who works from home. Unlike me, he seemed to have plenty of free time. Being an editor is so cool. I respect you. He was a man of good looks and education, and he seemed like a godsend to me. Stephen and I started dating, weaving our way through busy work schedules for about a year. During that time, Stephen never complained about my work and always showed understanding. With this person, I can make it work. With that in mind, I agreed to Stephen's proposal. Thus, we became married. He diligently took care of household chores for me. A year after marriage, my pregnancy was confirmed. While I juggled work and pregnancy, my husband supported me diligently. And thus, our daughter Hannah was born. We worked together to raise Hannah. Our daughter is now in second grade, already eight years old. She's so cute and is the apple of our eye. One early morning, Hannah woke up and I called out to her. Good morning, Hannah. Is jam okay for your bread? And Hannah says something like this. Mom, this isn't the time for that. You should hurry up and get ready for work. Huh? I only need to be at the office by nine today, so we still have plenty of time, right? No, I think it's better to take an earlier train than usual. Let's leave the house together. Since Hannah insisted, I quickly got ready. Normally, I would see Hannah off and leave the house, but this time, I left 28 minutes earlier than usual. I took one train earlier than usual to work that day. I drank coffee and prepared for the morning meeting. As a result, I realized there was an oversight in the documents that needed correction. It was a good thing I left early, as Hannah suggested. I thought as I hurried to make the corrections. However, even though it was time for the meeting, there was someone missing. He arrived about an hour late and received a scolding from the higher-ups. When I asked him about it later, he said he was late because the train had an emergency stop due to trouble. And I found out that it was the same train I usually take. Thanks to Hannah, I was able to attend the meeting on time and even make the meeting materials perfect. I felt grateful to Hannah in my heart. Actually, my daughter has this mysterious habit. Whenever she says something strange, if you ask her why, she always answers, Because I saw it in my dream. She even once told me to take an umbrella because she predicted sun rain. Hannah might have some sort of intuition. When I told my husband, Stephen, about it, he just laughed it off, but I believed her. One day, something unexpected happened. My husband, Stephen, suddenly told me something. Hey, Susan. Actually, I've been really busy with work. I've been trying my best, but it seems like I've reached my limit. Certainly during that time, my husband would often claim he had meetings. Then, head out, spending nights locked away in his office. What do you mean you've reached your limit? I've been feeling exhausted and can only imagine pessimistic scenarios no matter what I do. When I went to the hospital, they diagnosed me with depression. That's... With a solemn expression, Stephen conveyed this, and he continued speaking. So I want to take a break from work for a while. Like, a recharge period, you know? Yeah, that might be necessary, too. Your health comes first. Thanks for understanding. I'll take care of the household chores, so can I leave earning money to you? Um, yeah. 
To be honest, I wanted Steven to work too, especially considering Hannah's education expenses. But if he's diagnosed with a depression, it can't be helped. I decided to increase my overtime work and put even more effort into my job than before. Steven didn't do any work after that and instead took care of the household chores. Then, perhaps intending to console me, he started offering me alcohol every night. Feeling pleased by his gesture, I drank it as my husband suggested. Due to fatigue and the effects of alcohol, I always ended up sleeping soundly on those days I drank. One day, as I returned home from work, Steven said this to me. Hey, how about a family vacation for the first time in a while? Huh? A trip? Steven handed me a brochure for a tourist destination by the sea. As I looked through it, I responded. That sounds nice. Since it's Hannah's summer vacation, it would be a good opportunity to make some memories, don't you think? Yeah, it would be a good change of pace for me too. Then I'll make the arrangements. Stephen said happily. If he's so energetic, I did think it might be time for him to start working, but I kept that thought to myself. It was around the time the discussion of the trip came up. I felt like Hannah's expression suddenly darkened. Hannah, did something happen at school? Tell mom anything you want to talk about. No, it's nothing. Since Hannah responded like that, I didn't press further. During this time, I was busy with work, coming home late at night, drinking the liquor Stephen recommended, and falling into a deep sleep, so my conversations with Hannah had also decreased. Am I neglecting her too much lately because of my busyness? I have to engage more with Hannah during the family trip. I thought about such things. The day of the trip thus arrived. My husband drove us to our destination. We arrived at a seaside spa resort with a large scenic cliff nearby. Since it's already late today, let's rest at the inn and do some sightseeing tomorrow. Upon Stephen's suggestion, I headed to the public spa with Hannah. While we were bathing, Hannah spoke up. Mom, can you sleep with me tonight without drinking alcohol? Uh-huh. Uh, sure. I understand. It's a promise. You can't drink alcohol, okay? Since Hannah insisted, I promised. I won't drink. I had been drinking too much lately at my husband's suggestion, so I thought it was necessary to have a break day. When the meal was brought to the room, Stephen took out a bottle of alcohol he had brought from home. Come on, we should drink at times like this. You've been working hard. I've prepared some good liquor. Then Hannah gave me a look. No, Stephen, not tonight, okay? I'm tired, and I think I'll sleep well tonight. Oh, I see. It's a shame, even though I prepared it with care. Stephen reluctantly put it away. After that, we had dinner at the inn and spent the night as usual. When it was time to sleep, Hannah said, I want to sleep with mommy, and slipped into my bed. She's still such a baby. Thinking that, I closed my eyes next to Hannah. I was tired, so I fell asleep right away. And then, Mom! Mom! Wake up, quickly! I woke up to Hannah's voice. In my drowsiness, I checked the time on my bedside phone. It was 2 a.m. Hannah, what's wrong at this hour? Did you need to use the bathroom? In response to my question, my daughter tearfully said, Mom, please, we need to escape from Dad. Huh? Those shocking words completely woke me up. Looking over to the next bed, I realized my husband wasn't there. What do you mean? Escape from Dad? What's going on? Never mind that. Hurry! We have to escape from here. Hannah's face was pale, her expression deadly serious. In light of her unusual demeanor, I decided to trust her and immediately got up. Then, hastily packing our belongings, I took Hannah's hand and left the inn. Fortunately, there was a taxi nearby, so we took it to a station a little distance away. During the ride, Hannah's hand was trembling. Arriving at the station while waiting for the first train, I started talking to Hannah. Hey, Hannah, can you talk to me? Why did you say escape from dad? After a moment of silence, my daughter spoke. I had a dream. Dad was pushing mommy off a cliff. It was near the cliff by the inn. Huh? Indeed, Hannah sometimes has premonitions, but this seemed too far-fetched. That's impossible, Hannah. You just had a scary dream. When I tried to dismiss it, she shook her head. 
It's not just that. I woke up in the middle of the night before. I heard Dad on the phone in his office. On the phone? Yeah, Dad said something on the phone. He said, I'm going to get rid of that woman soon. Look forward to it. We'll get married during the trip. What? And that's not all. He said, I love you, Irina. Isn't it strange for Dad to say I love you to someone other than you, Mom? With tears in her eyes, Hannah looked at me. But I thought I misheard it, so I didn't tell you, Mom. But today I dreamed that you were thrown off a cliff. I don't want Mommy to go away. Saying so, my daughter burst into tears and clung to me. While holding her, I was shocked. Is my husband trying to kill me? And who is Irina? If what Hannah says is true, I can never forgive that man. It's okay. It's okay, Hannah. Calm down. Mommy is here with you, Hannah. Then my daughter said, Mom, here, and handed me something. While she said that, I took it from her hand. It's okay. Mommy is okay, so I can go get some sleep. With that, my daughter seemed relieved and began to doze off. Taking advantage of that, I sent a message to my husband. I received a message saying my mother at home was injured, so I brought Hannah to my parents' house hastily. I planned to stay there for a few weeks. There was no response for a while, but after Hannah and I boarded the first train, I received a reply from my husband. Did that happen while I was taking a little walk at midnight? Please, give my regards to your mom. Since I'm here, I'll do some sightseeing before I come back. It seemed Stephen didn't suspect us at all, so I took Hannah and returned to my parents' house as I announced. My family at home was surprised to see us appear in the morning, but seeing my determined expression, they seemed to understand something and warmly welcomed us. After leaving Hannah with my parents, I began to take action. I asked the investigative agency to look into Stephen's background, and just one week later, the investigation results came back. The results were damning. It turns out that when Stephen returned from the trip, he had been bringing a woman to the house and spending time with her. The woman's identity turned out to be Irina, and she was a secretary at the company he worked for. Upon seeing those investigation results, I couldn't help but smirk. Three weeks after Hannah and I fled from the spa resort, I headed alone to the house where he was. Then Stephen noticed me and looked up. Oh, you're back. How's your mother doing? Huh? Where's Hannah? Upon hearing this from my husband, I quietly replied. Stephen, please let's divorce. Huh? He seemed momentarily taken aback, but then quickly smirked, a reaction I didn't miss. I see. So, Susan, you're being cruel, abandoning a husband with depression. But if you want a divorce, I guess there's no choice. But in return, there are conditions. Conditions? Oh, we'll have to handle the division of assets properly. We have $200,000 in savings, so you'll give me $100,000, right? Otherwise, I won't agree to the divorce. Division of assets, huh? Even though I had depression, I still did the housework and was a good husband, right? Since you're ditching your husband like that, it's only natural. At that moment, I dropped a bomb on Stephen, who shamelessly says such things. But shouldn't it be you who pays? Huh? Then I threw the photos I got from the private investigator at him. The photos showed him entering hotels with his mistress and inviting her into our home. Hey, what's this? I hired a private investigator on you. You were cheating, weren't you? And your mistress is that woman, Irina, right? Ugh. Stephen was at a loss for words. Cheating would have been bad enough, but I never imagined you'd go as far as trying to kill me. Huh? This time, Stephen was visibly taken aback, and gradually his face began to turn pale. Ooh, what's that? What do you mean, I'm targeting your life? At that point, I confronted him with a large amount of additional evidence. Among them were screenshots of WhatsApp messages exchanged between my husband and his mistress. Shall I read it aloud for you? Finally, tomorrow it will be done. Today, as usual, I'll give her alcohol spiked with sleeping pills. So the reason you used to give me alcohol regularly was to meet her at night or talk on the phone? Uh, uh. Let me continue reading. With the effects of the sleeping pills remaining, I'll push that staggering fool off the cliff. The police will think it's an accident. Wow, Steven, you're brilliant. This is conclusive evidence. <sighs> Since Steven remained silent, I continued reading aloud. 
Here's the follow-up message on WhatsApp. Even though she didn't take the bait at the end, the plan to push her off remains the same. Then we can finally be together. With the insurance money coming in at $300,000, it's something to look forward to. Why would you have something like that? I discreetly confronted your cheating partner, Irina. To be honest, I told her I wouldn't involve the police if she confessed. She was shaken and immediately handed this over to me. At that point, Stephen began to tremble and muttered, So that's why I couldn't reach her. There's enough evidence that you were targeting my life. Just give up already. Sending something like that is just a joke. Doesn't prove anything. At that moment, I pulled out something from the inn we were staying at and confronted him with it. It was a bottle of alcohol that Stephen had tried to make me drink that day. If I have the police investigate this, the truth will come out, you know. St stop that. I don't want to get caught. If it comes to this, right here and now, I'll... Stephen shouted and tried to grab me. Since you walked in, I've had my phone connected to my lawyer. They're outside the door, so if you try anything, they'll burst in here immediately. What? That's when I cut to the chase with him. I don't want to label Hannah's father as a criminal, so I won't involve the police. But in return, be prepared, because I'll squeeze out hefty compensation and child support from you. You scumbag, don't you dare show up in front of us ever again. Stephen seemed to realize there was no way out and collapsed on the spot. Later, Stephen and I divorced. I, of course, got custody of Hannah and was able to win higher than market rate alimony and child support. Property division naturally didn't occur, and I inherited all of the shared savings. Subsequently, I demanded compensation from Irina, the woman he cheated on me with. Initially hesitant, she paid the compensation in full at once when I threatened to involve the police. Eventually, it seemed Stephen and Irina broke up. Stephen, having exhausted his savings on payments to me, ended up burdened with debt. He vanished, accepting the condition I set forth, to move far away and never appear before us again. I don't know what became of him afterward, but it's certain he's leading a miserable life. On the other hand, with the compensation, I moved with Hannah and started a new life. Perhaps due to her growth, my daughter's peculiar remarks have completely disappeared. As a result, she has made new friends at her new school and seems happy every day. I look forward to my daughter's growth and want to live positively from now on.